All right. Hello, uh, YouTube. Welcome, everyone. I will get started in just a moment here. Well, hello, Rico's Reef. And it looks like we're live on, um, on our live stream. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Live, or just let's call it Lightroom Live for today. Um, I'm your host today. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you for the next about 15 minutes. We're going to keep this one kind of short. Uh, I would normally spend some time doing some shout outs and saying hello to people like Victoria, Seb, Allison, uh, Rico's Reef, and everyone else in the room, but uh, just, I'm going to say a general hello to everyone so I can get right to the topic at hand. Uh, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about, and that is uh, organization in Lightroom. Just time for spring cleaning. A lot of people, or a lot of people I encounter feel like their Lightroom's in a mess and they want to start over, and even though that might not be necessary, it's really a matter of uh, just understanding how Lightroom works. And if you understand how Lightroom works, then it's that much easier to fix any organization issues that you may have. Uh, let me just click one thing here so I can make sure I can see your comments over here on good old Facebook. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. So let me uh, switch to my computer. And once I do that, uh, you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. All right, uh, so I'm going to start off with um, one basic, easy technique. And once you do this, you'll be well on your way to having Lightroom organized in a way that makes sense to you. Um, first and foremost, Lightroom simply references your photos wherever they are. So if your photos are all over the place, that's what makes it feel like it's a mess. Now, uh, I'm going to do this in two parts. So part one is for people that are just starting off to get them on a good ground floor. Part two, which will be in um, about five minutes, <laughs> will be for the people that we're going to spend a little bit more time for the people that think they're in a mess and how to clean it up. So part one, if you were just starting off today or you wanted to start over, either way, uh, this is what I would recommend. Go to the drive that you want to have all your photos on. And if that's more than one drive, that's fine. And um, typically that's going to be a fast, either internal or external drive with lots of space on it. Uh, <laughs> your Lightroom's a riot. Well, Gavin, hopefully we'll fix that. All right, so uh, on that drive, what you're going to do is you're going to create a folder. And you're going to name that folder whatever you want. You can name it Pictures. I've already got a Pictures folder. Um, you could call it My Photos and Videos because Lightroom can manage your videos too. And since a lot of, or just about every camera can shoot videos these days, you might want to think about that. So I'm just going to call it just for this uh, quick example, my photos and videos. All right. Now that I've got that folder on that drive, that's got tons of space where I want to be able to put everything, then I'm going to go in that folder and I'm going to start thinking about all the categories that I would normally photograph. So for example, I'll create a new folder called landscapes because I do photograph landscapes. I'll create another new folder called portraits because, yep, I photograph portraits. I also do travel photography. I'll do a, you know, travel photography. And you just go on and on and on. I'm not going to do them all, but you get the idea. Maybe you're going to do one for a family. You know, your, your siblings, parents, mother, daughter, brother, sister, son, whatever it is, cousins, all that would go in the family. <clears throat> then you might want to have one for, you know, work. I, I do work for a living, so, uh, you know, any work photos I take would go in the work uh, category. And so forth and so on. Once you get all those categories and you still say, well, Terry, I might have missed one, you can always add to this later. Or if you say, well, I kind of need a catch-all, then yes, it's okay to have a miscellaneous. <clears throat> and that's the one that, for whatever reason, doesn't go in the other ones, which I would be hard-pressed to think about something that doesn't go in the other ones. And maybe you also have one called commercial, uh, if you're a commercial photographer and you do commercial shoots. Okay, so now that we've got our categories, what goes in those categories? And these are just empty folders at this point. So in my uh, travel, for example, I'll open up the travel folder, and in the travel folder, maybe I've got a folder called Paris. I've been to Paris before. I've also been to New York. I've been to a bunch of places. So you might start putting in uh, by location. 
Uh, once you've got this all set up, and again, we just went into a folder called travel and we started putting in the travel folders and so forth and so on. So if I had a family member called uh, Ann, I would put in Ann's uh, um, photos. If I had one called Susan, I'd put in Susan's photos, so forth and so on. And so you just start building out the main categories. Now, here's the thing. What if you are doing more than one shoot for that particular category? So for example, let's say Paris. Uh, I went to Paris uh, three times. So I might do Paris um, 20 or 2006 and Paris, um, you know, 2012 and Paris 2015, I think was the last time I was actually there. So you get the idea. So if you, if you need to break it down, break it down by year. And if you went more than once a year, start breaking it down by month. That way it's that much easier for you to know visually on your hard drive, what's what. Now, um, when it comes time to bring in new pictures off your cards and off your cameras and off your whatever you're shooting with, they go in those folders. That makes life easier. So now I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut to a folder that I've already got set up just like this and it's already got content in it. It's called My Photos and Videos. It's got uh, family, it's got friends, it's got landscapes, portraits, travel, New York, Paris, and each one of these folders has images in it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and twirl all of these up and kind of collapse them down. All right, so all of these have images in them. And that's the key um, is that for this next thing to work, folders won't come into Lightroom if they're empty. So all I've done so far is just simply create these folders on my drive, put images in them that actually go in those categories, I, some of them I might have renamed, some of them I didn't. These are the original names on the, from the uh, images off the uh, camera. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so now that I've got this all set up, starting out from scratch, how do I get this in the Lightroom? Well, you can either do it one of two ways. You can either just go right to the import button, find that main folder and import it in, or in this case, since uh, I can do drag and drop, I'm just gonna drag and drop this right onto the Lightroom icon. It's gonna bring up the add, which is the most important part of this. The pictures are already where I want them to be, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add them to Lightroom. I don't need to move them, I don't need to copy them, I don't need to do anything else, just add them in place. The other thing you wanna make sure you have checked is you wanna make sure you have checked include subfolders. Um, with someone's asking, would this apply to Lightroom 5? This would apply to any version of Lightroom. All right, so now that I've got this in place, uh, the only other thing I would do as an optional step, and I tend to always want to do this, is build smart previews. That doesn't work in Lightroom 5. So, or actually, no, that works in Lightroom 5 on up. Um, so, build smart previews. And of course, we don't want to import sus suspected duplicates. Now, this is all the images. So, this could be thousands of images. I'm not worried about that because Lightroom is going to keep track of the structure. Once I click the import, and since it's just adding, all it has to do is just bring in that structure. And so here it is, right here in the Lightroom library module. My photos and videos, family, Anne and Family Reunion 2010, and it's showing each one, how, how many pictures are in each one. I have a friend called Bruce, I didn't make any more friend folders. Uh, portraits, I have two different portrait images, or two different portrait folders, I should say two different people, travel, uh, lots of travel images, and it just brought them all in. So see how much easier that was? Organized on the hard drive first, bring it into Lightroom, Lightroom maintains all that beautiful organization for you. All right, so that's starting from scratch. Now we got six minutes left to talk about cleaning up your mess. All right, so starting from scratch was easy. Great, here are all the and pictures. Um, and those were named Ann. But let's go back to one of those other ones I remember seeing. Uh, I think it was maybe, was it Paris? No, the Paris ones were fine. New York was fine. Iceland was fine. It was one of these. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here, Bahama, Bahama Cruise. Now, there are two of those. There's one from 2010. There's one from 2014. And they all have these weird names. So I'm going to, just as a quick tip, I'm going to recommend that you rename your images once you get them where you want them to be. So just go up to your library menu, uh, rename photos, and we're going to rename these um, uh, Cruise, 
Bahamas, what, you know, however, whatever naming system you want to use. And I usually use a four digit code because I usually don't have more than um, 9,999 images in any one place. So we'll click OK and see how I just did that. It named and numbered all of those. Now, what, why did I name them? Because if I ever want to search for something, I don't even have to think about what folder is that in, travel, Bahamas, blah, blah, blah. I just do a search in Lightroom for cruise or Bahamas and it will find all my Bahamas photos and bring them up instantly. Okay, so now let's talk about fixing the mess. I'm gonna go back to all photos because I remember seeing something here. I remember seeing these three, and I think these are in the wrong spot. Let me go to family reunion. Yep, they're in the wrong spot. These don't belong in family reunion, meaning they need to be moved. This was actually a portrait shoot. Uh, she's not a relative, so somehow they got in the wrong folder, they're in the wrong place. Uh, so I need to fix that. So how would I fix that now that I'm all set up? Or how would I fix my mess that I've made over the years or months in Lightroom? You can do it all in Lightroom. Everything I did in the operating system first can be done in Lightroom after the fact if you made a mess and you want to clean it up. So um, I forgot her name. Uh, I'd have to go through my metadata and see if I can find her name, but anyway, we'll make up a name for her. All right, so let's say that her name is, I believe it's Tiara. I think it's Tiara. So let's say these should go in portraits in a folder called Tiara. Well, I'll go to my portraits folder, which are the portraits I have so far, and I'm just going to go up to Lightroom and say, you know what? Hey, add a subfolder. That's right. Lightroom can add folders and subfolders that are actual real folders and subfolders in your uh, hard drive. So when I say add subfolder, since I'm already on the portraits folder, it already knows to put it inside there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and say, you know, call this one TR because I forgot her name. <laughs> I think it's TR. All right, so let's click OK. And I didn't say in include anything, so right now that's an empty folder. So there's nothing in it. If I go back to the mess, back to the one where those are not where they're supposed to be, I can actually physically move them in Lightroom, and the best part about moving them in Lightroom is then Lightroom knows where they are. I don't ever have to think about going back and moving them in the operating system because now they've also been moved in the operating system as well. So therefore, I don't even have to think about it. If I now go say, show me these in the Finder, just for those who doubt it, show in the Finder or show in Windows Explorer, they're now in a folder in portraits called Tiara and they're in that folder with their original names. And of course, I would take the time and now so I don't ever have to think about it again, rename photos, Tiara, and let it rename those. So if I'm ever looking for her, I'd be able to find her. And of course, I can do uh, face, face tagging as well. All right, so now that we've got that, what else can I do? Um, well, you can of course, we just talked about moving images and creating new folders. That's pretty much all there is to managing. If you want to clean up a mess, start with creating that folder structure of the way you shoot, and then start moving all your existing images into it. A friend of mine, uh, she had about, I don't know, 20,000 images in the Lightroom catalog, at least, and hers were a mess. And it took about a half a day to clean it up, meaning just simply creating the folders, thinking about it, moving things into folders where they go. Now. Those are folders. One last thing in my last two minutes. What are collections? If those are folders, what am I gonna do with collections? What collections allow me to do is have organizations that don't disturb where my folders are or where my images are, I should say. So for example, if I wanna create a collection called, let's just for the sake of example, favorite portraits, Well, that might be some of Tiara, that might be some of Alina, that might be some of Jennifer, it could be a bunch of different people. So for example, I can now go to Tiara and say, you know what, out of these three, that's my favorite one, it goes in favorite portraits. It did not move it, it did not change its location from the uh, hard drive. And you know what, Jennifer, this is my, f actually I like the black and white, it's my favorite one of Jennifer. And I go to Alina, and I like uh, this one with Lena and her boyfriend. So let's go ahead and move those over. And now I've got a collection of my favorites that don't disrupt or disturb my, my folders. My images are still in the folders where they will always be. 
and my collections let me have sort orders, slideshows, printing, all kinds of things, websites, web galleries, uh, Lightroom Mobile, of all the different things I want organized the way I want without having to disturb the order. So as I import new photos, they go in their respective folders. I create new folders on the fly all the time. As I want to see them in different ways and together, and they may not relate to each other, meaning they may not be from the same shoot, they may not even be from the same year, then I can put them in collections and share and show those collections any way I want. All right, and that is literally 15 minutes. I'm right on time. Uh, that is it. So with that said, if you missed anything, if you watched, if you want to watch this from the beginning, you will be able to do that as soon as I end the stream. You'll be able to start over from, the, from scratch and watch it from the beginning. It's that much easier to clean up your Lightroom mess than you think it is. And if you're just starting from scratch, it's even easier because you can start on the right foot. So with that said, take care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. And uh, cheers, everybody. I know it was, it was quick, but that's what we do here. All right. God, bye, everybody.